I'm gonna go with Jam Time and RTW Fruity. They're on Cobalt Dream. Because I am not waiting for this other match. Thurks, I guess, is gonna be DQ'd. Okay. So, with that, we have Cobalt Dream as our map. And actually, we should probably switch over to this immediately because we are going to be... Oh. Started, but just barely. So, Rovers come... Or, sorry, Tanks, rather. coming for Jam Time. Rovers coming in for RTW Fruity. I was right. Wrong player. And we're on Cobalt Dream, a match... A map which is... Basically, what happens when someone looks at Comet Catcher and decides restraint might have been necessary. Still a lot of metal and still very spread out, but not quite as excessively feast as Comet Catcher, because my goodness, that map is just... Anyway, yeah, so this similar vein, but also some terrain variation, as there is, in fact, a small gorge over the northeast and southwest. There are two small gorges, in fact. And it's very blue. Kind of hypnotically blue, actually. I look at it as it scrolls by and I sort of wonder, like, is it shiny? Or is it just blue? And the answer is, yeah, it actually is pretty somewhat shiny. Yeah, there's, there's kind of a basic specular pattern on this. So it is, in fact, shiny. It's like a giant mass of cobalt. I don't know how shiny cobalt is. Or how blue? I think that's just cobalt oxide. Like, pure cobalt. I'm not sure how blue that is. Anyway, for another time. At the moment, RTW Fruity just setting up a bit of raiding, going around the map, trying to find what to work with. Jam Time, same thing. Neither player expanding that quickly. Jam Time being a little bit more on the button on that. But both players expanding at roughly the same rate. I mean, granted, both players expanding kind of slow, relatively speaking. RTW Fruity, much more concerned about getting static defenses up, which not really that necessary. I mean, get a cup, get one Lotus for each one. Don't really need to. Honestly, this Lotus would have been better served here. Just because a Lotus here would mean that there's at least something to provide some damage for Kodachi's. Now, granted, it worked out in this case, but. You know, now there's plenty of room for that Kodachi to go around. And it just barely worked, too, that actually. The Kodachi could have gone a little bit farther south, a little bit farther west. It would have been fine. Jam time turning out to be a little bit ahead. Unfortunately, they are not caretakering up. Now, of course, this is a lower. This is the round four somewhat newer player or lower skill match, which is newer player, judging by the icons. So yeah, there are going to be some mistakes. Like, forgetting a caretaker, or forgetting to build energy. Especially now that the player is really suffering from too much. I mean, jam time is a little low in energy, but they're not accessing because of a lack of energy. They, they would be if they had enough caretakers or other builders in the main base, but that's not currently the problem. The current problem is just that they don't have enough energy, or sorry, enough, enough build power. Or they're not using their build power. They are getting enough energy, though. Just barely, but they are. Although, again, that's just barely with the wind generators at full blast, so, yeah, they're actually way behind. Anyway, economy aside, Fruity has managed to get a much, well, much more numerous army, not necessarily stronger. Tanks, of course, have much more power concentrated into single units. So I'm a little surprised that Fruity and Jam Time are expanding at the same rate, because rovers kind of need to expand real quick to get them metal. Because tanks need a lot of metal in order to build the units that are very strong, like the ogres and minotaurs. But, but the thing is that Fruity can more easily expand along the map and just lightly defend everything. Jam Time doesn't have as easy a time doing that. Their constructor is much more expensive, or at least was. 200 to... Yeah. Constructors twice as expensive. Their units are 
with I mean Kanachis and Blitzes are fast, but other than that, not really. And also their units are just not as numerous for cost. So I'm a little surprised we aren't seeing Fruity expand more. If nothing else, just to stop Jam Time from expanding as much as they need to. Jam Time now at 30. They can start building Ogres and Minotaurs without any real problem. I mean, they've got 30 metal per second. That's basically what you need to really start switching into Ogres and Minotaurs. And RT Fruity, RT Fruity just now getting 30 as well. Again, a little low on the Caretakers, getting those built up. What does Jam Time have for build power? Just 20. Caretaker and Factory. A little surprised they aren't building more. I mean, especially with tanks, you need 30, 40 metal per second into the factory to be able to build efficiently. First Ogre will be coming up very shortly, though. And Fruity's kind of got almost like one chance at this point. They... Because they have a lot of units. They have a decently broad range of units. They won't be completely caught off guard by the Ogre. But they're also not going to be building that quickly. Jam Time has the economic advantage. They are two caretakers away from the production advantage. Or one now, actually. Once this caretaker is done, it's the production advantage for Jam Time. And Jam Time has actually been doing a really good job of making sure their stuff's defended. If no, if there were no other reason, then just by attacking. Like, they've been expanding quickly and then putting defenses on top of that because the Kodachis have been basically forcing RTW Fruity to defend and not actually raid. So Fruity now finally going a little aggressive on their own. Still has to worry about some backyard attacks and... I don't even know. They have no idea that that Kodachi is there. They have no radar coverage or anything. So that Kodachi is going to get a nice free mason and two metal extractors. It'll eventually find it, at least. Still, Fruity actually doing a decent amount of damage getting in here. Though they are losing a few units in the process, but the Kodachis are not managing to hold on that well. One Ogre, whoever has done a second Ogre is coming behind. Sorry, third Ogre is coming behind. Second Ogre is already done. The first Ogre is up front. Had to deal with Fencers for a bit. But now Fruity with a reasonably strong economy coming in with... Okay, Fencer, Badger, Ravager. Very mixed army. Possibly a bit too mixed. Like, that gets a bit tricky to control. But I'm not sure how useful the Scorchers would be. Apart from maybe swinging around the back and finding some metal extractors to pick off. Fencers make sense. The Rippers yeah, kind of make sense. The Ravagers make sense. The Scorchers are just dead. They're scrap metal. They just don't know it yet. And this is what I mean by control. The fencers over here in the side don't really... They aren't being taken care of. Fruities... They just don't have a lot of concentrated army is really what it is. Like, if Fruity was able to buy themselves about 30 seconds to build up an army... Maybe a minute... They'd probably be okay, though Jam Time is switching over to gunships. What are they building with that? Are they going for locusts? That'd be the typical thing, but... No, we'll find out. Anyhow, jam time. I mean, they are still building army, but again, their army is more expensive. So in terms of sheer numbers, Fruity could build up like two Ravagers per Ogre. Pretty much. And you know, a couple of Ravagers and a Fencer basically deals with Ogres. Badgers do a decent job as well, though it's a little bit tricky just for the amount of damage that the Ogres deal. I mean, Ogres are a tough enemy to kill for the rovers. Actually, even... Honestly, I think Merlin... I'm sorry, Impaler. I think an Impaler might... Well, Merlin would be nice, but Strider. I think an Impaler will be necessary at this point. Fruity is just not... But even then, like, how do you hold the line with Impaler? Even the Badgers. Like, how do you hold the line with Badgers? That's sort of the issue here, is that Fruity... They all, they're currently kind of desperately flailing. They always have... So they're trying to... And I've done this... I've made this mistake myself many times. It's actually a very common mistake. Is that you're desperately trying to push your opponent to make sure that they're not able to build up. But in your attempts to do that, you're feeding them metal. Because you don't quite have enough firepower to actually break anything of theirs. Or really deal significant damage. But you're also desperately trying to prevent them from actually doing anything. Which... 
again, if you hold on a little longer, get a few more units. Like, get maybe double your army size. If you have, like, half a dozen units, especially. You know, get, you know, 20, 25 units. And then... I know it's a weirdly arbitrary number, but that's... That's a lot, actually. That's more of a, you know... That's one of those, whole, like, breathe deeply for one minute type things. It doesn't necessarily do much. It just forces you to think. So you wait until you have, you know, 20, 25 units or so. And then you can push forward. And you'll have a lot more concentrated firepower that can then be used. Because your opponent, if you're pushing and they're not really taking much damage, you're not doing a whole lot by hitting them than you would be by simply holding back, building up your army, and then hitting them far with a far stronger force. Because when it comes to units that are ranged, like, in attack all at once, their effective firepower goes up with the square of the difference between the army sizes, not with just the straight difference. Granted, that's only if they can, if all the units can fire at once. But yeah, that lands a square law. It's, it's a thing that it... It's not always true in 0k because raiders, especially the shorter range ones like glaives, operate kind of like melee units, so they follow more Lanchester's linear law. But when it comes to assault units, when it comes to larger armies, especially more mobile armies like the rovers and tanks, where they can easily get out of each other's way and all fire at once, the square law applies. But again, it's hard to get that in your head because you're thinking, oh crap, my opponent is putting all this pressure, I need to get rid of them, especially when you just lost your commander. Thinking, oh crap, I need to get rid of them now. If I don't push them, they'll just expand across the map and nothing will stop them. And it's like, no. I mean, hold the defensive line, but don't try to push with units you don't have. Or with too few units, or units of the wrong type or whatever. Like, just try to build up a reasonably strong army. It's surprising how much more effective that is. Like, yes, they're going to build an army at the same time. But you're not feeding the metal in the meantime to build an army with. Now, when you do attack, you're not necessarily attacking their entire army all at once. You might attack a smaller portion of the army, in which case, again, you have now the square of the difference as power, or as the power differential. But at this point, it may not matter. Fruity is just falling behind so far that it's... I don't know, the, the raids coming in along the side, just gutting them every time. There's a lot of reclaim, but I'm not seeing... I mean, also a lot of idle workers. So that's the thing. A lot of reclaim, but a lot of idle workers means that it doesn't really matter that, you know, there's a few hundred metal reclaim here, a few hundred metal reclaim here. Like, a lot of reclaim that, you know, Fruity could pick up, but they aren't. Unfortunately, it's just one of those things. It, it As you get more practice in the game, or play more regularly, which is sometimes tricky, but as that happens, it becomes easier to kind of make certain actions or thoughts automatic. So you can pay a bit more attention to reclaim. Or just get in the habit of checking around. Do I have reclaim? Do I have idle workers? Do I need to build more or rebuild my metal extractors? All that stuff. And so you just have more reclaim going on. Fewer idle workers. A stronger economy. A stronger military. And you win more games. Now, it's just one of those things. It, it's it's a multitasking challenge. But the pr more practice you have, the more that it becomes automatic. And you can spend a bit more time thinking about more reactive things. I mean, granted, it is a bit of a reactive thing, but more like, you know, what units should I build? Where should I place my armies? Should I place defenses and where? Stuff like that, where it's actually, that's a bit more automatic, too. But yeah, when it comes to unit composition and army placement and such, that can often be a little bit more reactive. But when it comes to reclaim, it's like just, you can just have a rhythm. It just takes a little while to get used to it. At any rate, jam time. Closing in on Fruity, take another factory, and I think Fruity will likely throw in the towel once the factory is down. They don't have any other production centers. And that factory is pretty much dead. Cyclops takes it out, and that should be that. Fruity, GG's, throws in the towel, and that is Jam Time taking a win. Another one, I believe that wasn't their first. Actually, I know that wasn't their first. Both these players, I think, were one and two. Look at the standing. Oh, come on. We look at the standings. They were, yeah, both one and two. So, we, that was the first match. However, there is still plenty of time. We are still solidly in round four. 
So let's see who else I can find here that is still ongoing that I haven't seen before. Oh, Exploit Mikesh Batra. Sure, let's go with that. Also Cobalt Dream. Have not seen these players yet. I mean, I've seen Exploit a lot in the past. I don't think I've watched Mikesh Batra at all. They seem new to me. All right, well, let's get into this. It is... Yeah. All right, starting out. Exploit, going for what looks like... Uh, going for low... For, for... For... All right, Cloaky versus Rovers. Rovers from Exploit, we catch Patrick, go for Cloaky. And... Oh, dear, they have a thing. Oh, that's not good. Oh, bad start from Mikesh Patra. Unfortunately, they can't hear Aquanim. Huh. Well, since like Mikesh Patra has recovered reasonably well from that. At any rate. We, I guess we'll continue to watch this. I mean, the players haven't exited, so I suppose we're probably not going to have a rematch. Just to deal with it situation, I suppose. Anyway, Exploit. Actually having a bit of a hard time pushing back. Mikesh Batra winning on attrition. Pretty even on economy, too, thanks to Overdrive. And, or was that Exploit that went, oh no, Bad Factory? Oh no, that was Mikesh Batra. Exploit with the plates! Hey! Someone's building a plate! I mean, Rover is a factory where I think the plate is less useful than, say, with tanks or amphbots. But hey! It's a plate! <laughs> hey, Crazy Eddie is in chat saying that ZK's gotten bigger since it's gone away. I mean, just stay away. Like, no, no, come back. It'll get slightly bigger with you here. Unless you're actually pushing players away. But I don't think you were. Okay, that is it. Mikesh Batra throws in the towel. Exploit. Actually, well, no, exploit with that raid. There's no real answer to that. So Mikesh Batra throws in the towel. That was a that was a bit disappointing. I didn't realize that there was a. Well, I guess I did realize it went in, but well, that was that. So yeah. All right. Well, who else is there that I haven't had a chance to see? Well, Pet Turtle and Saniac. Going on for 20 minutes, but it might be good. Probably will be. I mean, Pet Turtle and Saniac are both strong players. Well, let's get this going. We are 18 minutes in, so it might end up being a situation where we get sped through in two minutes and then the game's over. But we'll find out. We're on Jurassic Sands. Not Cobalt Dream. This is why I'm not listing the map at the bottom, because it's too much trouble for me to try to change it all the time. I keep getting that mixed up. Okay, so... Spiders... And... Amphbots. Petrol and Spiders. Sanic and Amphbots. Oh. Sanic really going hard to the southwest. Petrol over the northeast. Oh, Tessa Rumble, my bad. Not Jurassic Sands. Oh, this map I really wanted to see. Dang. Oh well. Grizzly coming here. Oh, Grizzly versus Crab. Grizzly getting stunned out repeatedly. Those Venoms actually showing off what they can do quite well. Still a pretty low economy on both sides. Saniac 26, Petrol 33. Saniac, however, managing to get a bit of damage done over the southwest. But not quite able to do all that much significantly. At the same time, Raid comes back around the side. Fleas for some scouting. You guys are on a caretaker. My goodness. You guys are on the fusion plant with fleas. Oh, we did zoom in just to get, or zoom through just to get it all finished off. Thanks to fleas taking out a fusion plant. <sighs> nicely done, Pet Turtle. Very nicely done. Ah, I kind of wish we could have seen more of that.
All right, so. Well, anyway, that was that. I uh, wow, we didn't even get to the end. All right, back to the lobby. It is that was that was neat, but that was also very very short. And that was it for round four. That was a uh, was a hell of a round four. Okay.